So I've been putting this video off, um, the death of Osama bin Laden. So this is a story that I feel a little invested in and in that I enlisted in the Air Force for six years. Uh, now this was 2004 that I went in, so you know it was not a, a knee-jerk kind of thing. I, I finished up college first, um, and then I went into the military. Um, now I didn't lose anyone on 9/11, and thankfully I actually haven't lost any friends in service since. But being in the military. Um, I mean, when I came in, uh, I was very much under the impression that whatever I did, I could be deployed at any time. It was a very uncertain time to be getting into the military. People were talking about draft and all of that business. But I ended up more or less in a desk job, um, working with language, working... Um, in the big picture. The job that I was in uh, very quickly lost patience with the small picture. Um, most of what I did really focused on trying to get an accurate picture of what was going on on the ground and save lives to spare casualties, um, military and civilian, where there didn't need to be any. So I was already out by the time I uh, got out here to uh, New York, and uh, I didn't really feel anything in particular hearing that Osama bin Laden had died. I made my peace with the whole situation years ago. Death comes for everyone, and eventually it was going to come for Osama bin Laden. So I really, I wasn't surprised, although I was relieved to hear that it had finally happened. So that night, I ran into my roommate, Muhammad, told him, you know, did you hear Osama bin Laden is dead? And he cracked a big smile and he said, that's good. You know, where I'm from, Morocco, he's killed a lot of people. And it kind of reminded me how large the, the war on terror, the concept of terrorism has been. It's not something that's only affected us here in the United States. And you don't have to have lost a loved one directly to have been affected by the terrorist network, Al-Qaeda. So later on, I talked to uh, my other roommate, John, who's from New York. And he said, uh, you know, it's a great relief to me because I lost somewhere around 300 friends on 9-11. So the next day, I had business downtown, so I was in the neighborhood. I, uh, I walked by um, Ground Zero on where they're doing the construction, where the president... Uh, was going to come to give a speech, and I did not see any of the, you know, the shouting, the USA, that, that all happened the previous night, but there was a large, happy crowd, I saw smiling faces, but there really wasn't a ragged edge to it, I saw people there with uh, pictures of people who they had lost, victims of 9-11, I saw people there with uh, copies of newspapers, getting their pictures taken with the headline. There, there, I mean, there was a kind of a festive attitude, but I, I didn't see protest signs. I didn't see effigies of Bin Laden being put to, tor to the torch. I didn't see uh, Muslims being beaten, or Sikhs being beaten, for that matter. The whole thing to me seemed a little um, sober. That's just how it seemed to me, uh, looking in on it as I did. So, let's talk about the big picture a bit. Um, 
This was about this much rum when I started. So, in the big picture, if you go big enough, it really doesn't matter how many people die. Um, it happens to everyone eventually, right? So where does that leave us? We're accountable for what we do, but accountable how? Accountable to what? The only way Osama bin Laden never would have been brought to justice would have been at the hands of other people. It's the only force in the world that can hold people accountable for the things that they do. Personally, looking back on it now, I think that the number one thing that has slowed our progress, made it take so long to take out Osama bin Laden, was the invasion of Iraq. It shifted our priorities. It robbed us of the clarity of purpose. But it also raises the question whether or not going after Osama bin Laden ever was our primary concern, ever was our primary goal. If it were, then it is fair to say that we would now be withdrawing our forces. I don't expect that to happen because we have political realities to contend with. The cost of political realities is always going to be human beings. I know that's something that most people are not comfortable with. I think it is an unfortunate fact of history. There are always going to be more people. I, for my part, was willing to take the pledge to put my life on the line in the service of my country. So, where are we now? Are we moving forward? Are we moving anywhere? Time will have to tell. Personally, I'm willing to give the president the benefit of the doubt that he sees the big picture, that he is not going to commit lives to a conflict that doesn't need to be fought. However, he came into office in the midst of conflict. I'm not sure it's entirely in his interest to stop e any of this conflict. The world and its problems are simply bigger than that. What I will say in regards to the death of Osama bin Laden is I will not attempt to take away the peace that anyone who lost friends and family any of his terrorist attacks anywhere in the world feel. I do hope, whether naively or not, that the death of Osama bin Laden will be the end of this particular chapter, that the war on terror will ramp down, that we will begin to bring our troops home, and that we can focus on living lives and having a policy of peace. That's my hope. I know that I'm not alone in feeling it. So, to everyone who has passed, salute.